Hello, my name is Lee Vishloff. I'm a professional engineer with Technos Services Inc. and Technos is involved in helping companies get their technology projects done in a timely manner. And tech projects tend to fail for simple reasons. Today we're going to talk about one of those and that's the design decision compounding and, and how to get around that. So this is the outline. We're going to talk a little bit about what the problem is. Uh, suggest a more robust approach. Uh, give one uh, concrete example where I have used the proposed technique and then a brief conclusion. So the risk in product development starts with the fact that your company wants to grow and you have to do new products and anytime you do something new there's risk. If it's a product there's a development risk as well as market and, and other items. The modern products uh, often have to use single vendor inputs. It's it's practically impossible today to build a, a product at the semi where the semiconductors are interchangeable from one another, uh, assuming that there is hardware in your product, and and so this is an area of of risk, and that creates supplier performance risk as well as uh, feature risks because no product has all of its features. Uh, so I like to put it in the top right hand corner. One may be faster, one may be wider, one may be deeper, but you're never going to get all three. Um, at once. Now if you're doing uh, products for new customers there there is that feature risk and the standard solution and the smart way to do it is you want to get the product into the customers hands as soon as possible. Uh, user uh, exposure will identify problems with your user interface and any other technical issues. So this technique that we're going to discuss is is really about how to reduce the risk of hardware iterations that you need to go through in order to reach a customer testable product. Um, you know, products problems found late in your uh, product development tend to produce large delays, and uh, particularly if you're a small company and and you've sort of got your one kick at the cat here, and you want to get this product out the door into somebody's hand to create value in your company, you want to get there as fast as possible. So in any project there's a lot of technical decisions um, and there, if there's a lot of new elements in in what you're doing then your probability of a fast success it can be very low. Um, the way we traditionally try to mitigate that is we use engineering studies that is a, a good solution but they can be hampered by a variety of things. Um, one is the fear of making a mistake and another is not knowing where is good enough and and sometimes the purpose of the study is well let's find the best solution and and that may prove to be difficult because um, at your inputs may not give you that you may need something that is both fast and wide and and you know what is the exact requirement in terms of optimization if you can't have both the fastest and the widest uh, say semiconductor chip uh, for dealing with you know some telecom function so so you end up compromising and, and doing some apples and oranges comparisons and this is a place where one often gets caught in this paralysis by analysis type of problem and, and another is searching for perfection and sometimes there's just basic fear of people not wanting to be wrong so we need to a method to move things forward quickly and yet not create an undue amount of risk in our overall project so the solution to this is to use architecture flexibility in in order to support multiple options in your major areas. So, so what that really means is defining interfaces between subcomponents or or you know subsystems that will allow you to um, develop or iterate or refine on either sides of that interface. So here's the basic concept. In this in this example here, it's a handheld. Um, device and I'll show you you know a little bit more about it later but we had some major decisions that we had to make we had to have a single board computer we had to select a, a new vendor and um, there's a lot that goes into that because it's not just the performance of of the product it's uh, what's the ultimate cost going to be what is the development environment like how much support do you get from the from the vendor so there's a lot of things that go into that 
And then we had a display, a liquid crystal display. Um, and it was to be used in sunlight and it had to display video. So we had competing issues in terms of uh, operation in sunlight and speed of operation, temperature over which things would work, etc. And of course, like always, you don't get all the specs in the top right hand corner. There was a design decision that was largely a configuration item. Um, as long as the displays would do it, would they do VGA or did they have to do Super VGA in order for people to get value out of the functionality of the device. This was pre-iPhone, so there weren't quite as many good displays uh, available then as there are now. And then there were some shock strategies as to how we were going to do bumpers and, and whether we had mostly external shock controls or internal in, in the device. And then there were some powering issues because we had some pretty hard issues with regards to size, battery, and how long it had to operate. So we have a pretty smart team and you say well if you sign somebody to do a little study on each area they would probably have an 80 percent chance of getting it right but we had five key areas we have to get right which means we'd be sort of at the 33 percent level of probability of success on a single threaded uh, design path so what i decided to do was that we would we would put some uh, inner couple of interfaces into the system that we would then have to put a little bit of glue hardware in our design in order to allow different things to work together on those interfaces and it, that was not difficult to accomplish but what that allowed us to do is have um, different single board computer vendors and talking to different liquid crystal displays of different resolutions and and then on the mechanical packaging we had to put some flexibility in there in terms of support for those different displays as well as uh, different shock mounting approaches and and we decided to make the battery compartment separate from the rest or at least detachable in, in manufacturing so that we had two possible solutions there so so what that does for us is is it makes it so that at each stage and instead of having say an 80 percent chance of success if we can have two or more we're in the high 90s so we had two single board computers um, so we might call that a 94 percent chance and uh, about five liquid crystal displays so to be honest we were almost up to 100 there but overall if you said you had dual threads on all your major subsystems and you had five subsystems you go from a one-third chance of having something work on the first pass to you know an 82 percent chance of having it work on the first path and since we were trying to get into field trials to learn more about the application this was the approach that we took so this is the device um, and it's kind of robust and ugly looking but it was suitable for the task at hand um, and I guess that the really things that w were important is that there was there were quite a few supply risk items and we were a startup so we had a small budget so you may find yourself in that situation so what was the impact of doing the dual thread uh, well first of all the engineering study effort was was reduced because you didn't need to know you'd found the best solution or a perfect answer you just need to know that you had a reasonable probability of success and so the amount of time to find a few candidate solutions as opposed to the best solution is reduced quite a bit uh, on the design side you we have to put a little bit more effort into the printed circuit board and the mechanical design to in order to accommodate the the flexibility um, for the different units and the mounting and whatnot so that adds a little bit of effort you know maybe 10 to 15 percent and software more or less stayed the same uh, in terms of the coding but there were some issues in terms of you had to actually create multiple um, development environments so we had to create two development environments and typically that takes about three man weeks to get a good solid one so there's an extra few man weeks of work there and along the way we we would we would sort of swap back and forth between one platform and the other as to how we were building so we knew as we went forward it would work on either platform so so in conclusion we found that actually the dual stream approach uh, worked quite well and in fact if we'd had to pick a single board computer at the beginning we would have actually picked the wrong one uh, it turned out the vendor support was not very good um, 
and and I think this is a suitable approach when there's many many risky choices that you have to make and it's a ground up type product it, it's not so useful in cost reduction because in cost reduction one of the things you do is reduce the number of points at, at which you've you put in electronics and software to meet a common interface uh, along with a bunch of other things this wouldn't be the optimum packaging if you had excess material to support different mounting methods and stuff so I, I don't think I would use it so much for cost reductions I would use it to get something out the door to get it in somebody's hands and our experience was that uh, the significant subcontractors uh, grumbled a little bit about the fact that you know they, they had to uh, make accommodation for some other things they would have rather uh, quote we had just made up our mind but it was the right uh, approach to make uh, in order to get something out the door on the first pass so in conclusion you can reduce the uh, compounding effects of your technical decision making if you design subsystem flexibility into your product uh, basically that's a parallel iteration and the advantage of that is you pay a little bit as you go along but you avoid the, the significant backtracking that that would be required it, it doesn't give you the cheapest product but it is a robust way to get your first product out so that you can uh, start working with your customers